Hello everyone and welcome to the fourth episode of the Serket Project, this project will show the history of the fictional exoplanet Serket. In this episode we will cover the open ocean and the deep sea. We will cover the ocean starting with the surface and work our way down to the deepest parts of the ocean. The sunlight zone is defined by the abundance of sunlight fueling photosynthetic plankton which feeds larger zooplankton which is the base of the food chain in this area, there are the ichthyocarids and the acanthopinids which evolved in this habitat. With an increase in predators some acanthopinids have adapted to defend themselves against predators by schooling in groups up to over a thousand becoming the argentopinids, the argentopinids feed on planktonic organisms in the upper water column and have become smaller to subsist on less food. The levigobrachids are descendants of Oftera testa that adapted to the open ocean, it has internalized its shell into a structure similar to that of a squid's gladius and a streamlined body for faster swimming. To compensate for their vulnerability to predators it has adapted to live short lives and lay their eggs in massive clouds for protection against predators. With an abundance of prey a group of squatopinids may adapt to hunt in the open oceans becoming the celopinids, the celopinids are slimmer and more hydrodynamic to chase prey rather than ambushing them like the squatopinids. To adapt to the open ocean some conatesta may attach themselves to other animals becoming the rostritesta. The rostritesta like their ancestors employ broadcast spawning but with suitable hosts few and far between it may synchronize its spawning with the host to increase chances of fertilization. As the ocean gets deeper the animals get more pale and more frightening, the main source of nutrients at these depths is marine snow, and little to no light reaches these depths. To adapt to these conditions the ichthyocarids have evolved to swim upside down to catch marine snow falling from above into their mouth, and adapted four bioluminescent bulbs to recognize each other for ease of mating becoming the abyssicarids, they may be the most abundant species in the deep sea and in their abundance may create what resembles a starry night sky in the deep. A relative of the levigobrachids have adapted to catch organic matter falling from the surface accumulating nutrients on its branching arms, but unlike the abyssicarids it keeps its arms still only moving them when transferring its catch into its mouth, becoming the concebricids. Every ecosystem needs an apex predator and that role is filled by the abyssopinids, the abyssopinids are descended from acanthopinids that adapted to hunt by mimicking the lights of the abyssicarids to lure them into striking range, it has adapted multi-hooked jaws to ensure prey doesn't escape. Going even deeper we find the ocean floor, an ecosystem with vast stretches of barren sea floor punctuated by hydrothermal vents, the animals here subsist on the marine snow falling from the surface and the chemosynthetic bacteria around hydrothermal vents. The trellostomes and the cryptobranchians live in this habitat. Phytozoans in the deep have rejected the algae in their tissues and replaced them with chemosynthetic bacteria becoming the chemozoans, and chemozoans live exclusively around hydrothermal vents and to adapt to this they will release more and smaller larvae than its ancestors to reach more vents. The chemozoans are not the only animals to live off of the hydrothermal vents a group of cryptobranchians adapted to feed on the chemosynthetic bacteria around the vents becoming the anthovermians. The anthovermians have evolved their gills into frills to catch plankton similar to the arms of the concebricids, they can move each frill and independently for increased feeding efficiency. In the deep there exists the oldest surviving lineage of the ancestral platybranchians which is the abyssomorphs, the abyssomorphs like many animals in the deep feed on nutrients falling from the surface. The next link in the food chain is the abyssostoms, the abyssostoms deep sea relatives of the anchorostomes that feed on whatever it can find. It grows larger than its relatives and has a tough exoskeleton for defense. The tendicastomes are deep sea relatives of the achylstomes, Tendicastomes are ambush predators that burrow just under the sea bed with its five pairs of antennae to ensure a successful catch it has longer jaws and its venom is more potent than that of its relatives. Now that I have covered the animals inhabiting the open ocean and the deep sea I hope to see you in the next episode where we will cover the freshwater realm. Goodbye.